gonna um, talk through this a little bit. You'll hear the full piece, but I uh, wanted to talk through what's going on here a little bit. So to orient yourself on this screen, violin one, um, we're working with Spitfire solo strings and a Mendelssohn string quartet. I was really impressed with the performance by this group on Erato that um, really uh, kind of has one of the most vibrant, vital performances that is on um, that is available now. I fell in love with this piece 20, 30 years ago. I can't even find that recording anymore. But they also interpret it a little bit differently. They've got um, sections where they're kind of playing um, something kind of more of a spiccato. I split it up with violins uh, here so that if I need to use an articulation, I go down here, and if I uh, otherwise I'm using the virtuoso total performance. I don't know in retrospect if that was the right choice. I think if I were to do this again, the viola over here doesn't have total performance, so it just has a legato, and then I would move into the articulations. Here's the other uh, violin and its articulations, violin two. Also the virtuoso, and I didn't pan them any differently, and I didn't change the mics on anything. So you're going to hear that some of this is user error, some of this is learning curve, uh, learning another piece, person's piece of music, all the different ways of interpreting it. It's kind of an ambitious piece to do virtual orchestration for uh, with uh, sampled instruments, but I wanted to try it. And if you've got any tips or advice, please put them in the comments. I'm sure other people would love to hear your critique of any of this. Uh, you can even critique the video, but mostly let's try to focus on uh, the way to do a virtual performance like this and the way to execute um, a, a piece like this. Uh, again, um, I enjoy this recording and even the mixing and engineering are part of the things that I enjoy about it. So I started adding um, a little bit of saturation and a, a little bit of limiting, but that's not, uh, I'll, I'll take that off while we discuss this. And uh, let's, let's look at the score. Um, the score, it's the second movement of uh, Opus 80, Mendelssohn's String Quartet Number no. 6. And um, it's an interesting piece. It's been recorded a lot of times. Uh, it goes something like this. Oops, that is pressing play on the PDF. That's not the way you play a sequence. <laughs> Let's talk about a couple of things that we're hearing. So uh, we're hearing the, um, if we go all the way back to the beginning, you can hear a couple cello, what are often called slams, um, where the bow kind of hits the instrument. The cello um, slams, uh, if you look at the uh, velocities here, this was brought in from notation. So you can see some of the um, velocities are really boring uh, notation um, program velocities, which is to say I didn't re-perform this which is the first criticism I'd give myself. And the first thing that you'd probably want to do better if you were to, uh, you know, really try to do this well. So one at a time, some of the things that I learned about the Spitfire strings, you can make it the total performance slam if you bring the velocity all the way to 127. I thought it was a little distracting, but I kept a couple of them in there so you could hear it. There, there's one. Uh, so those, those are little clicks that you'll hear. Um, I tried to do this with a mod wheel, but um, the mod wheel wasn't keeping up with the sequence, and it was really difficult to mechanically kind of push it the way I wanted, so I ended up just drawing curves with a mouse which ends up, again, feeling a little more mechanical than it needs to be. The instrument makes up for that because it's pretty expressive samples, but... Mm -hmm. 
And if we um, just listen to the backing, pa the backing instruments here. <laughs> volume bump in there. I wonder if I put the expression on somebody. Let me group these and... Oh, well I'm gonna have to figure out how to... Alright. Um, I might do a couple of those things so that they don't become distracting later. Yeah, this was challenging. Um, the violin and viola kept up with it really well. The cello was the hardest. So, really nice, uh, I think. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good attempt. These are the, the times that so a lot of groups play these really like as longs and robotic, but this group played it um, in that more spiccato kind of ch -ch 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 shorts kind of feel, and I really liked that feel better. It felt strange to have them be longs, and um, it gives a different effect, but I, uh, I liked this better. So that's an interpretation kind of thing. The notes on the score don't really tell you to play them any part they don't really say spiccato for sure but they also mm, they're kind of just there the notes are just there <laughs> this was a section that i found hard to um, both of these to make really musical anytime there was too many of the exact same set of notes over and over. Especially in the viola. Um, let's see what I tried. I mean, some of this again can is user error. I mean, a little bit of expression. Only there's only three vibrato types, as I recall. So this is kind of low vibrato, no vibrato, and lots of vibrato. So my um, control twenty one is for vibrato. The velocities weren't what was um, making a big imp big difference because the patch is a legato patch. The legato isn't going to change when. It's just the uh, mod wheel, so you would have, you could maybe work that a little bit more. Um, cello has total performance, and they are. It just anytime you do these kind of repeated figures, it was it was just it was a little difficult to, um, you know, kind of make them feel like anything. Uh, this section is right here. So these, um, you know, s slur or legato, da 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 da, with a sforzando. Um, let's back up. Why does it sound like he's going to little you? Sounds like he's changing bow right there or something. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. Some of the things with the total performance, I think the script tries to be too tricky um, uh, every once in a while. Which is why I may, if I were to do this again, I may not use total performance. I think total performance might be better for a writing tool, perhaps, than um, a, a, you know the final product. It might be easier to work with the legato control and the 
the way that velocity can impact um, the legato patch rather than the total performance where you you the script does stuff for you and you can't necessarily change it so right there it sounds like it's trying to go do something there that i don't want it to do i hadn't noticed that specifically before it just this definitely needs more um love and love and care to sound good now this section the spiccatos really worked great though so um from something that was very challenging to immediately something that's really interesting <laughs> So this vo I don't this volume pop here. I, it's just really strange how the viola just leaps out of the mix, or like leaps back into the room. I guess really dry, really ambient. This is the violin, of course, um, but it's the viola. For some reason, I couldn't figure out what I did differently to make that. So I, I assume it's my fault somewhere, maybe, but I've looked and looked and I haven't been able to figure out what I did to make the viola jump so far back in the mix. Even further than it was before, it seemed like, but maybe it's just a matter of perception. Um, and maybe it's the violin not having. Um, I know that there are some, what are they called? Um, there's a place back here for Forte Piano Hall Trigger. And I played with that a little bit too, and I wasn't able to make sense of things. So if someone wants to comment on that, then um, that'll be, that could be interesting. Then we talk about tempo changes. You know, the tempo, I didn't really massage the tempo very much. I kind of, um, the way Studio One works, um, you, I didn't see an easy way to mark 3-4 as, um, kind of play it at half, you know, as 3-8, so I just set the tempo to 300 and moved on, and there's a couple quick little, you know, dips in tempo here to, to take a breath. What else do we want to hear? Let's hear the first violin. Why not? Let's hear the first violin soloed. Okay, <laughs> so that, that sounded weird, right? Um, you know, it almost makes me feel like there's a problem with... The mics... Oh, look at that. The close spike is selected only. Talking through what I did, I didn't actually move the mod wheel much here because it actually sounded decent and I was trying to um you know the experiment was see what I could get and how hard it is to to make this stuff come to life and that that's pretty lifelike I mean it's not 
perfect, but most of it's on the mo mid vo uh, vibrato um, setting, and some of it's on the, the the highest note I put on the molto vibrato. So I could have played with the vibrato a bit more, but I just left the expression at the top and um, very little mod wheel and kind of boring velocity changes, uh, although, yeah, the velocity changes would have made a difference in the total performance because they add different um, spiccato overlays. Uh, what else can we say about this? Again, with these quick runs, uh, they look like this in the music. Right, that's this one right here, because we're going into the second repeat. We're going to do another one and another one. The group is going to join. Maybe I don't need this so loud. You know, I mean, you can see there's a lot of different things that can be done to make this performance a little better. Um, there's so many different th little things that can be done to really squeeze, squeeze out every ounce of emotion. Suppose it's worth talking about the double stops. It's it's almost impossible to make kind of convincing double stops. I did use the other articulation uh, on occasion for all the instruments. Well, mostly viola needed double stops um, as well as this first violin. But yeah, I mean the the double stops. It's really hard to kind of make a double stop happen um, with these sample instruments unless they're really kind of designed to give you a double stop performance. This line doesn't make any sense because this is, at some point, this is just going to be the molto vibrato. I don't know. I think it's around 64. That's the first violin. Then the uh, the second violin. Uh, might be interesting to somebody. We can add chapters to the video and people can... Why do we also hear the close mic when I have it in the middle? All right, well... Hopefully, uh, something about the virtuoso player. Maybe it it tries to go to the close mic first. Now I don't remember this popping out that way, but maybe the close mic handled it differently then. Sounds weird. It's probably because I'm changing the vibrato. I think the vibrato didn't react the same way. Where you get kind of like a bump of room reverb when you put the vibrato up. I don't think this close mic was acting that way. I mean, you can maybe hear it a little bit, but I liked what that was doing, so I think that's why I was making that choice there. The room bump, ambient bump, is a little mo a little noticeable with the v the switch to the molto vibrato, but not nearly as much as when you've got the tree mics on. It's 
kind of a nice mix. Definitely did not spend any time with violin two on this phrase. I mean, obviously I... Maybe I spent a minute or two. These spiccatos are just wonderful though. And again, this is in total performance. I don't know that how much control you get. There, There's a staccato and a... Let's see, there's a spiccato and a staccato in the articulations. And you may even get more in the advanced sections or the the other other techniques. Really nice. Um, again, you could you could spend weeks on this and just just mastering every little bit of it. I did not. This is just a couple of sittings. Um, some of it on a laptop with a trackpad. <laughs> so. Um. <laughs> It might interest somebody, um, the way that I decided to handle this part, which is um, oblique motion, where one note is changing and the other is staying the same, right here, with a sforzando and a kind of a slur and a tie kind of, I don't know. It's an interesting thing, so I brought in the lower voice here. Da, 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 and had the lower voice go up an octave and come back down and the upper voice drop and go back drop down and go back up um I th there was a reason there was some reason that i thought of doing that and i can't remember what it is right now but i just wanted to point it out that um you make these little decisions when you're again this is supposed to be a double stop it doesn't sound much like a or a you know yeah double stop <laughs> that yeah that's actually the way it's written Giuda, Giuda, da. keep hitting play on the PDF This is the legato patch, um, and it shows bowed, I think, because of my velocities. So we can check out what that sounds like with finger. And with um, slurred, or portamento. Not that anybody would do that. So you can play around with those different um, transition types. And this is why legato might um, be a more appropriate choice for a final pass with everything, because total performance, while it does a bunch of cool stuff for you and it can sound really great, you get a little bit more control when you do things with um, just straight up legato. <laughs>
let's listen to that again because it's just so wonderful. <laughs> Isn't that great? I just love it. So we're supposed to start off at fortissimo, um, and then do a sforzando and a sforzando. I don't know why I got quieter and quieter. I feel like um, either one of the recordings did that, or I don't remember why I did that. But I kind of, maybe it's because we're leading down to this piano. I hit play on my PDF again. And I also like that it has trouble with it right there. <laughs> Isn't that kind of neat? There's like a round robin. I mean, some people hate this about Spitfire, but I feel like there's a round robin in there that's late. <laughs> but it, it, it actually helped me not have to introduce any randomness. It's like the third time this note is played after hitting the play button. That C is... Late. And then we can move on to cello. Let's see, this is the total performance. And then here's the articulations. <laughs> Could have made that pizzicato a little quieter, um, but I was kind of working on the mix concepts while I was going, um, just figuring out how to mix something like this. Um, while the mixer is up, the first violin is at zero decibels, but the second violin, strangely enough, I added three decibels to to get the balance we're hearing. You might say I made the wrong choice. I also had it pan differently for a while, but bringing it back to this the same panning kind of made it just feel a little more unified and it's also a little more out of the box so hopefully that'll not be distracting and then uh the viola is also is three decibels louder and the cello is four decibels quieter <laughs> which i find um there's it's just interesting um let's do the the notation again and i'll turn the mic off <laughs> Thank you. 
so that was uh, that's where I'm at. Um, these are all learning experiences. Go out and check out this recording um, if you're interested in um, my inspiration for the kind of approach. Although it doesn't come close when you listen to their <laughs> the real thing. Obviously, it's going to be a lot uh, better. Don't 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 pretend. I'm not pretending. Um, and yet, it's 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 convincing um, in certain places, more convincing than others, and it's certainly fun. And I would welcome any uh, any. Um, I mean, there's obvious advice like keep working on it. <laughs> but if there's anything that I mentioned that um, kind of jumps out at you as as something that maybe I'm not, I haven't even thought of, that would be great. And I'm sure other people would be interested in hearing your comments as well. So. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this and, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, but it, it does show some of the strengths. I don't know that it shows many of the weaknesses. I think most of the weaknesses you can work around. Um, it's more of just, just putting in the effort of the Spitfire solo strings. I really wanted to kind of give myself some something to chew on with them. Um, I wasn't finding myself writing with them very much, and I wanted to give myself a little project to right with them and I think this is a this type of exercise is a great um, you know way to spend your time if you're if you're trying to learn but yeah play them if you can and um, that's another good exercise work with work your expression controllers more work with the tempo control work with the timing more I just wanted to uh, try it and then share my experience of trying it and hopefully somebody gets something out of it cheers have a good time stay safe